A new feature that was added specifically in version 14 is the ability to, as you're going along, set an in point, say I want that whole action, and an out point. And then I can right click in here and choose convert in and out to duration marker. So this is a great way of saving multiple regions. So if I'm going along and I go, I want that. Okay, make that into a region. Keep going. Is there anything else here I like? Nah, I don't like that. Keep going. All right, that. Great. Turn that into a region. So it's just a really handy way of keeping track of not just moments, but specific areas of each clip. Now, once you have one or more markers placed, as in this clip, there's a new way to get a nice listing of all of the markers for purposes of quick navigation. If I go into the option menu, there's a markers submenu, and this submenu shows you the name and note, or at least the first X characters of each note, in a list. Choosing something from the list jumps the playhead to that specific marker. And the more markers you have, the more useful this becomes. I can go to a good reaction shot. And this is also available in the timeline viewer. There's also a marker submenu, but this is specifically showing me timeline markers. So if I'm using markers to keep track of things I need to do, now I can jump the playhead to each one of those to-do items in order to do whatever it is I need to. So all of this is cool, but there's a little bit more. So if I go back into the media pool, and I'm gonna open it up to be a little wider, and I'm gonna go into list view because what I'm about to show you only is exposed in list view. So in list view, you'll see all of these disclosure buttons attached to certain clips. These are clips that have markers in them. And if I open the disclosure button, I see a list of all my markers by name. And I can double click any of these markers and it opens up that clip and it jumps the playhead to that specific marker. And as you can see, it sees every single marker, even the markers with duration. Now, the interesting thing about this is I can also use these as subclips if I want. So I'm going to jump into timelines. I'm just going to make a new blank timeline. I go back into video and I open any of these up. And when I drag any one of these into the timeline, what I'm doing is I'm effectively editing the duration from that marker to the next marker into the timeline. Now, let's just say I have a marker with duration. I'm going to option drag this marker open to create a marker with duration. And this happens to be marker 5. So if I go to marker 5 and I drag marker 5 into the timeline, now you can see I'm just editing the duration of that marker into the timeline. The gap between this marker and the next marker is ignored in this case. However, if I don't have a marker with duration, it's simply the area of that clip from that marker to the next. This can be a great way to generate a bunch of subclips for editing, depending on how you like to work. If you want to learn more about Resolve's new features, you should check out my library of different training titles at rippletraining.com.